connect, solve painful problems, raise amazing adults, and have healthy families. Welcome to the Sean Donahue Show. Jordan and I do this podcast because we want your family to be close and connected. And we want you to feel empowered and equipped in your most important job, the most important job in the world. Let's go deeper than this podcast. Head to my website, parentingmodernteens.com, and get my email straight to your inbox. And when you're ready to go deep and get serious coaching from me, join me in my VIP membership. Parents are teachers, and every home is a school. So teach well, love well. All right. Let's have some fun together. What is up, my fellow parents? Hey, Jordan and I are here because we love your family. We want you to raise awesome, amazing kids. And we've got some important things that we want to talk about with you and with each other. You know, many families really rock it when it comes to these rites of passage, the way of kind of coming along our sons and daughters to sending a message to them. Hey, you are one of us. You are an adult now. We view you differently. As we know, many cultures, they are thriving in these rites of passage ceremonies. It's like they rock it. They do such a cool, creative things, these young people. And today, Jordan and I are going to take a few minutes to inspire you, to tell you what um, what other families have done with rites of passage to inspire you to use them with your children, to open your mind to some creative ideas, to, to talk briefly about some of the dangers that we all face if we do not thrive as parents, ushering our kids into adulthood through adolescence. During the Ask a Family Coach section, I'm going to give you three tips that are really, really going to be really helpful, some things that I've learned over 25 years of working with your sons and daughters. And I think today is really going to change your parenting and change your life. So Jordan, when you hear rites of passage ceremony, what do you, what comes up for you, man? What do you think about? I mean, I, I think what's interesting is, is how you intro that. And I think it's important for us to all to realize that like rites of passage is basically something that you can do as your family. I, I wouldn't look at society as like a, a thing that mm. understands rites of passages here in America. We have, lost our way. We've lost our rites of passage. We could say, really Hey, have. you're 18, you're an adult. You can vote. You can go fight for us and die, but you can't yeah. drink yet until you're 21. Like there are, there are different yeah. stages when it comes to age that we try to say is a rite of passage, but the reality is it's not society's lost. We don't understand what a rite of passage is. So this is going to be very personal for a lot of us. And that's, what's great about America is because we're going to bring our cultures in and have different rites of passage. So if yes. you've got anybody who's maybe, um, you know, a Hispanic culture, uh, you know, you've got quinceañeras that you've probably yes. gone to, Ooh, nice or, accent. Yeah. or, or maybe you've got some friends that are Jewish and you've got bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. Right. And so that's, what's cool about yes. this country is we've got a little bit of everything. So we just need to figure out what's best for us, what's best for our kids and, and kind of, because ultimately what are we trying to do? And I think that's what you're trying to set up us for is we're trying yes. to get these kids to be adults. Yeah. And it's a statement yes. when you can have like a party that says, Hey man, you've done it. You've made it. Congratulations. Like yeah. you're an adult now. Yeah, man. Now, here's a, I want to share a personal story with you right off the bat here as we open up this podcast. This is very, very personal to me. Okay. That only a few people even know this story, and now I'm just sharing it publicly with the world. So let's go back in time. Let's see. Go back in time, a long time. Daniel and I just celebrated, celebrated 20 years of marriage. So yes, thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Friends and family, thank you, God, for helping us through this. This story takes place about 21 years ago, Jordan. So before you were married, okay. Before were you was with, married. Were you with Danielle yet? No, I wasn't. Okay. I didn't even met her. And I was doing a lot of journaling at that time. In fact, I was living with you and your mom at that time. I was really doing a lot of journaling. I was a young man in my early 20s, and I just had this feeling, Jordan. I had this strong feeling. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it's yes, from do. God. I don't know if it's probably from God. I don't know that I was one day I was going to be a dad and I was going to have a daughter. I just oh, had this feeling. That's so cool. And I also. I've had that feeling, feeling too, by the way. It's a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah a great feeling. It, it was just before. And this before, before. Before. Yeah. I just, I knew I, I, it's like you have an inkling. I know I'm, I'm going to be a dad to a girl. It's ink, inkling, is calling. I just feel yeah, like calling. there's this presence was telling me, you know, I'm preparing you to be a dad one day and it's going to be of a girl. And so I opened up my journal at the time and I wrote a letter to my unborn daughter. Oh, that's so crazy. And I entitled the letter in my journal uh, to my daughter on her 12th birthday. Wow. 
And I wrote a love letter to her as a rites of passage ceremony that she's turning 12 today and how much I love her, how I've been thinking about her uh, before she was even born. Yeah, but you didn't even know what that feeling was like. That's insane that you had that vision. And in the letter, I told her, I'm reading this to you and I've been thinking about you every day. Um, since even before you were born in that, uh, I will always be there for you. I'm thankful to be in your life. I'm not going to read it to you. Um, and I chose that purposely because it's private, right? And I wrote it in a way that if I ever did have more than one daughter, I could read it to each daughter. So I, I was just going to ask when you said, I'm not going to read it to you. Were you talking to us, the audience, or were you saying you're yeah. not going to read it to your daughter? Oh, okay. So you no, did no. read it to your daughter. Good, good, so good. I, I was concerned. So I have, so, so I have three daughters. At this time, this podcast is filmed. One daughter is 18. And uh, I took her out um, to the Cheesecake Factory when she was 12 years old. <laughs> you in the Cheesecake Factory. You love well, that I place. I, dude, I do. I just you actually love went there that place. over the weekend. Dude, they have the best <laughs> salad dressing, man. <laughs> you they, are so yeah. funny. I don't think they that's do. the first time you've talked about Cheesecake I Factory do. on this podcast. That was, <laughs> it was her choice, her restaurant of choice. Okay. I took, right. I, the tradition is... I, my daughters, I take them out for a father daughter date night and you get to, you know, restaurant of your choice. We're going to dress up. And so, and I read, so about six years ago, I read that letter to my oldest daughter mm -hmm. on her 12th birthday. And then my next daughter, her name is Miley. She's 14 at this time. And she chose this restaurant, which is called the lazy dog. <laughs> and I took her out and I read the letter to her on her 12th birthday. It's just a me, um, a love letter to her, but also ushering her, you know, into, into young adulthood and mm -hmm. just calling her a young woman and reminding her of my commitment to her. And then I have one more daughter. She's seven right now. So five years from now, I'm going to take her out to the restaurant of her choice. And mm -hmm. it might be the Cheesecake Factory. They might tease me for it. <laughs> and that is, uh, that's something I've done. It's just very, very special for me. And that, how was it for them, though, hearing that in those words and knowing that it's almost like a rite of passage for them? <laughs> I can't speak for them and I want to honor their privacy, but I think it was just very emotional for them. Okay. You know what I mean? And that makes so sense. What, what I, what I do, what I will do is that as soon as I release this podcast, I will post on social media a video because Miley gave me permission to make a video of that night of us together. Oh, that's great. Uh, and I even started, you can even hear the first couple sentences of the letter because she let me film it as I started reading it to her. Nice. So when you come out to this podcast, go to my social media channels and you can see Miley, you can see us and you see a little video. And so I think just parts of passage are a key like part of just. What, what made you pick the age 12? You know, I think that's, I really like that question because if you ask 10 parents, at what age do your children become young adults? Great you're question. You're get 10 different responses. And what you're about to hear for those of us listening, as we share a couple of fun stories about rites of passage ceremonies that throughout the world, you'll see that it kind of varies. I think for most cultures, it starts, you know, around age 11 or 12. What I learned interesting, even about a bar mitzvah and a bat mitzvah is that it's 12 for, uh, it's upon reaching 13 for boys and in the Jewish culture, it's 12 for girls. So it's mm -hmm. different ages. And so for me, what, what I have come to the conclusion with is I like age 12 or 13. It's like that around that grade six, you mm -hmm. know, I really feel like that was a big shift. I know that even for me too, like when I was in the sixth grade, my world definitely changed. I started doing a lot more mature things, yeah. adult like things, the hormones, yeah. mm -hmm. the independence. And I think it's just such a, a powerful thing for uh, an adult or an adult community or a family to look at a young adult and say, look, you're one of us now you're yeah. young. But young adult. I like that terminology. Adult. Yes. A you young are young. Adult. And just to give them that, that, that identity, to speak that truth over them. And that's where we're going to talk about how to do that properly, why to do it, the dangers of not doing that today. How about you? If you just putting you on the spot, if you were. Well, I was literally you, just talking about this today at work. I mean, it's getting very interesting, you know, and I don't want to get too much into the details on it, but think about like uh, a young woman's natural monthly cycle okay and yes. we were talking about this at work yeah the age is changing from what it used to be maybe from when adults first got their cycle to what the yes. kids are getting it now i mean we're talking yeah. nine ten year old yeah. girls 
are I beginning know, to get the cycle now. So and that that is a rites of passage because because you yes, become a woman, is. so to speak, at that age, but you're right. a 10-year-old little girl. Oh my god. It's so hard. So, so I like hard. how you say the age is different, and maybe there's multiple rites of passages here, which is great. And that helps us I become more is. of an adult, you know? There's yeah, different stages. I, you're right. You know, it really is. We're going to get into some more details later, but on the surface, other things, here's like some examples of rites of passage, you know, that, uh, that often are not talked about is prom. How about that's a good one. Have and nice. getting married, right? Graduation, uh, even a retirement party, or even mm -hmm. for some people like, uh, immigrants that citizenship. Where you oh, that's a, a big citizen. deal. That's, that's a like great, huge, deal. huge right. deals. But yeah, that's really interesting. You know, on a side note, I've read some research and, uh, just take this with a grain of salt because I think it's very complicated. It's probably very controversial that some daughters who have a very tight, closely knit relationship with their father, mm -hmm. they are starting their cycle much later than other girls are. Take that with a grain of salt, but there's okay. a lot of research and changing going on right now with when girls are starting their cycles, why they're starting them. See, I thought and it had to do with the food, the food and what we're eating and the hormones. So that's interesting. I'd, I'd love to obviously um, dig into that. Not now, but not now. Yeah. I figuring mean, I, that I, I out think, is interesting. First thing that comes to me, mind for me is, uh, is social media. Like mm -hmm. my, my, one of my daughters and I were talking about how mature this one 11 year old girl we just met was. And my daughter's response was, yeah, that's what social media is doing to to into these kids. They are growing up fast and they yeah. are thinking about adult things. They are talking like adult things. They want to be adult. And so, yeah, there's this kind of lack of childhood innocence that is happening with some of our kids. They're becoming more adult-like at a younger age, but that's not what we're going to focus on today. We're talking about how to use our power wisely in this beautiful thing called rites of passage. Did your parents do any rites of passage with you growing up? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, we did the normal. I had a cool 16 year, you know, birthday party. Um, you know, we had a graduation party, but there was never anything definitive. And I think for me, Going from high school to college was that rites of passage oh, okay. because I it was my first time out of the house yeah. on my own. Yeah. And I realized that like I didn't want my parents to provide for me anymore. I wanted uh -huh. to provide for myself. Yeah. And so it was like, Lem, I want to get a job. I want to yeah. try and start to pay for things. I don't want to ask for any money. And so I guess it was right there around that age of 18 where I wanted to take that leap and yeah. become an adult for myself. I've been a, uh, my parents didn't do anything like that for me growing up. Gosh, I wish they did. But I have been a, a part of a, a couple times, two or three times of other people's rites of passage ceremonies. So like at when my friend um, Matt Salovich turned 18 years old and I called him my friend, even though I was much older, you know, I was mentoring him. His parents contacted me and some other men in Matt's life. And his dad all organized it. And we met up at this one place and had all these men here. And we each read personal letters to Matt, to Matt which I think maybe even gave him like a personalized gift, mm -hmm. like something he can walk away from. Mm -hmm. And it was just this way to just love on Matt and just say, hey, welcome to adulthood, Matt Salovich. And Matt is now That's awesome. uh, a grown man and he's a successful businessman in New York City. I think he's probably uh, close to his late 20s and we're still <laughs> close to this day. And so, but- uh, It just shows you the importance of what these rites of passages can do. I mean, think about your baptism. If you get baptized, that's a big party. Right? Like, yeah, that's is. a big rite of it passage, is. getting baptized. It, it, it really is. That's actually kind of an underrated thing people don't talk about. Like, in the Christian culture, to have a, a teenager or an adult mm -hmm. choose to publicly, like, get dunked in a tank in front of a whole church, or maybe even share out loud, this is their personal faith. This is really, really, really important. It just sends a message to yourself and to the community, like, I'm ready for this. This is where right. I'm at. I believe in this. This is what I want. Many people listening to the podcast probably know I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins. So when me and Danny did the class, right, we went and did Unleash the Power Within. After day one, you walk on coals. And that was a rites of passage. Wow. After you learn day one how to take control oh. of your mind, you walk on coals. But 
Some people might think that's silly. That's nothing compared to what some of these other countries do to their <laughs> to their kids I when it comes to rites of passage. <laughs> I mean, nothing. it's let's talk wild. About it. <laughs> let's talk about it. Okay, let, first, okay, first, let's. Uh, so, Jordan and I, just to help you, inspire you, to entertain you, let's. We want to share some some things that we found of what other cultures are doing. Now, we found about. 30 different stories. We're not going to share 30 stories with you today, but we want to just take some of our favorite ones to uh, and share about what you could. And as you listen to these, we take these with total respect for all cultures. We just want to enjoy them and react to them. And we want to use this episode to help you think of what are some creative things you can do for your children or even, you know, even if they come around. 18, 21, some creative things you do to usher them into adulthood. So, Jordan, <laughs> a couple what, of things. Uh, okay. Two of my favorite ones are, have already been talked about before, but I, I'm i really a big fan of uh, bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, and I'm really a, a That's a good age, too. Of quinceañeras. Right? Yeah, yeah, those are good ages, right, to they do really are. We got, I we like got 12, 13, we got 15, because when done <laughs> right, what these what these cultures are doing is they really are sending a strong message like, look, this is uh, this is how we view you now. We want you to take this seriously in a in a bar mitzvah. I mean, the young person has to go and stand up in front of the whole synagogue and recite certain things. That's a big pressure point. You know, quinceañera is a pressure because you have all the people looking at you, celebrating you, loving you, bringing the whole community together. These are really, really great things. And when they're done right, because if we just turn them into these parties with alcohol or mm-hmm. big celebrations, I think you're missing the point. The point of this is this message of like, this is where you're at and this is where you're going to be starting today. And we're going to change. You're going to change. The expectations are going to change. The parenting is going to change. Welcome to adulthood. If you don't, if you don't hit that message you just have a party then i think you're missing something i agree i agree and i like what you did with your buddy where you guys all read letters to each other that's like very meaningful you don't we don't see a lot of that anymore you know and i think that's that's really cool um so those are easy going i'm gonna go with one that's a little bit more gnarly so to speak okay (laughs) yeah okay i'll do another one after you do gnarly okay and so the ages here are between the ages of 10 and 20 and i'm sure this culture will figure out um, what okay. age is best for that person? And this is going to be in Tanzania and Kenya. Okay. I think it's okay. called the Maasai of Kenya and Tanzania. Okay. They've got several rites of passion. They're trying to carry their boys into manhood. So okay. between that age, 10 to 20, what do they do? you got to become the new warrior class, the new warrior tribe. And so they play, place these, you know, kids or, you know, young adults in <clears throat> to these houses the night before the ceremony, the boys go to sleep outside in the forest at dawn, they return for a day of singing, dancing. It's a party like you talked about, but there's a meaning behind it. They tr- they drink a mixture of alcohol, okay? Okay. Cow's blood, milk. They consume a large portion of meat, okay? Oh, so it's just oh. basically like a festival for, yeah. you know, that type of culture. Oh, but wow. then when they're done, yeah. they have to be circumcised. Ooh. In that moment, at that age, oh. and in that transformation to becoming a man, they are not allowed to make a noise. No oh. ouch. No, that hurts. Wow. Just stay stoic and move on to becoming adults. Wow. That, that my friend, spit, is a little spit. deep. Oh, that's a little – that cuts deep. That cuts deep. But, yeah, what a uh, what a ceremony to be around other men. To yeah. To expose like that, no pun intended. Right. And to really – Say, hey, we need to have self control right here because being a man is about self control. Yeah, that is a good. Here's here. How about this one? Here, you know, here's something they do out of Brazil, right? For, forgive me if you're from Brazil and if I'm butchering the name. They call this the Satori Maui Bullet Ant Initiation. Okay, <laughs> oh, this, emphasize yeah. on Bullet Ant. All right. Okay. Now, boys as young as twelve, they get to put on gloves. All right. How's that sound so far? Not easy. Show. Easy peasy. But these gloves are full of bullet ants and they sting so bad. They're like getting stung by a bee probably. And they have to wear these gloves for 10 minutes. Oh my and gosh. Why are they doing this? Well, it symbolizes the young boy's endurance, bravery, and their readiness for adult tasks like hunting. Like you're ready to be a man. Right. 
toughen up. Wear the gloves. This right. Is what it means to be a man. We are, you are, we are ready. You're crossing over. I don't know about that. I think I'd rather have a bar mitzvah or a quinceanera, but what do you got? What's next? Well, I think it's interesting too, because a lot of these cultures, they do, especially in the male, you know, category, it's, you, you have to be tough. And so a lot of these challenges or, you know, these parties moving on to becoming a man, you got to be tough and you got to withstand pain. Yeah, you do. Yeah, we kind of lost that in a lot of a lot of um, we you know, really have a lot of cultures. Yeah. We really have that. Make, reminds me of a book that I read. I even made a video on it. Let me see if the name the name is called the name of the book is called the uh, something something of the American mind. And I start, forgive me for butchering that, but one of the things that sociologists just discovered is that one of the problems we have with youth now is that. Uh, they have these core beliefs in some, not, not all youth have these beliefs, but some youth have the beliefs. And one of the beliefs that the author talked about is that, you know, life should not be painful and any type of painful idea, painful thought, painful belief should be avoided at all costs. That and sounds terrible. It sounds terrible. Terrible. I mean, you wouldn't have a diamond if you wouldn't have rocks smashing together to create pressure. Yep. I mean, you have to have pain in some, I mean, you wouldn't have children. How would you have children? I know, I know. So I'm going to have two here real quick. Uh, one one is in Ethiopia. I find it kind of funny. You got to jump okay. over cows, but you have to do it while you're naked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. Participants successfully jump over castrated male cows four times while naked. And it symbolizes that the childhood that they are, that they were, they're leaving that behind. And then this one is downright dangerous. In Vanuatu, okay. which is a small island nation in, I believe, the South Pacific, yeah. they have to take their young boys and they have them jump off a 98-foot tall tower. But mm -hmm. what they use is not a bungee cord. They use mm -hmm. vine. So think of like climbing rope, oh, although climbing rope is- I've seen videos of that. Yeah. And there's no stretch to it. So you're jumping off a 100-foot right. tall tower and they said the vine- they start when they're seven or eight to practice, right? Oh so the vine only goes to where your your head basically is just a couple feet above the ground. Oh, God. Yeah, and I've seen videos of that. It's not. And so it says here that in their first dives, their mother will hold an item representing their childhood. After the jump, mm -hmm. the item will be thrown away, symbolizing the end of childhood. As the yes. boys grow older, they will jump from the taller towers, eventually getting to man mm -hmm. manhood or manliness, mm -hmm. uh, that 98-foot tall tower. I'm like, oh, my God. Gosh, can you imagine if we did that right. here? You know, it's an underrated rites of passage is the Catholics confirmation. Mm. Let me tell you why I, some things I like about that is because for most, what most parishes do is they do it as a group. So you've got these, like, I think sophomores and juniors in high school, and they come to these classes for every week for a period of time and they go through it together. So it's kind of like your community of, of faith and you're coming together, you're seeing it's like a youth group and these kids don't have to be confirmed. It's like a part of the Catholic tradition. And then they have the ceremony where the Bishop lays their hands on, on the conf confirmants, praying that the Holy Spirit's outpouring and anointing them. And it just, it's kind of cool because it's such a big deal when you're a sophomore yeah. or junior in high school. It's a big deal to like kind of come and do a class like that. And, uh, and you're not even, you're kind of doing it as a community. So yeah, um, you got you I one, like, one, one or two more. I really enjoy the Amish because oh, the, you really enjoy the Amish. I, what a great way to start. I really business. do. No, I'm serious. Yeah, I love their furniture. Doing, I love the idea of their life because they get rid of technology lot. They are, they're, I mean, yeah, they are they're really standing out. They're, yeah. they're keeping the family values strong. And what's they great really, about it is yeah. everyone there is choosing to be there because their rites of passage says, if anybody's seen the movie Kingpin, you kind of get that idea. But when you turn the age of 16, they let you go and do whatever it is you want to do. You can leave the, 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 the camp, so to speak, and go out on your own, explore the world as the world is. And what's it called? Is it called Rumspringa? I yeah, I don't here. know the term rumspringa. Yeah, that makes sense. R u m s p r i n g a. Yeah. So basically, you're allowed at that age. You can just go into modern life, use technology, dabble in alcohol. But the whole idea here is you realize what the world is, and by the age 26 or before, you have to decide what you want. Do you want to live in the world, or do you want to go back and live in the Amish culture and 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 be part of the, um you know, the community, so to speak. And so a lot of the times, I don't know the statistics in their community, but they come back because they kind of see the flaws of the world and they decide that maybe these family, 
this family dynamic, what technology can do, be destructive, is bad. And so they go back to the simplicities of life. You know what? Let's just pause for a second. Um, Because here's some of the... Let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask myself right now. And if you're listening, ask yourself this question. What do you, what do these rites of passage ceremonies have in common, right? What do they have in common? Um, I'll go first. In my work um, with families inside of my membership, it can be very, very messy. Jordan, there's a lot of hurting kids out there. Kids who uh, are really struggling with their impulses, with their emotions, kids that are screen addicted, struggling with patterns or addictions. There's a lot of hurting parents out there. And my team and I have come up with a lot of strategies t- to help take, you know, a child from here to a place of health to help take a really defiant or checked out or really hurting teenager from here into a place of maturity. And one of the things that we've discovered over the years is that doing something drastic, dramatic, or even taking a young person kind of out of their regular world and taking it like either taking a time out from that world, a break from that world, or just dropping them into a whole new world can be so freeing, can be so positive. So one of the things I see that some cultures are doing well is that they they're taking a, it's like they, they have these young people take a time out on their life and say, we're going to take a break. You're going to do a period of isolation, or you're going to do a period of intense classes, or you're going to do something for a period of time to really take a break on your life, to usher you into your next period of life. And it's going to be more adult like, and it's going to be different and it's going to be higher expectations and it's going to be better for you. How about you? What do you think? To me, I think it's um, any of these rites of passage help the person involved, kids in this case, switch their thought process of I'm a dependent. I need help to no, I can make a decision for myself. I'm on my own. Mm-hmm. And I think no matter what it is, it's that mind set that shifts yeah. in us to become individuals and not to be in need of a parent in, in every moment to figure out how to get from point A to point B without asking for directions from your mom or dad. I mean, nowadays you got the phones and all that, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, I do. You are now in control of your own path. Yeah. And that's what the, the idea of this rites of passage is to me like and hopefully it. to everybody else too. You know what I just thought of What you were talking, I picked up my phone and I Googled something. My favorite prayer that I've ever heard is called the prayer of St. Francis. Have you heard this before? Maybe. You heard of it? How does it go? You've probably heard it. I'm going to read it right now. It's a beautiful prayer. Um, I'm just going to read it and let you decide, you know, how you feel about it or what it means to you. Here's what it says. In your words, it kind of inspired me to read this because I think it's kind of the same, the same thing. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, I may bring love. Where there is wrong, I may bring a spirit of forgiveness. Where there is discord, I may bring harmony. Where there is error, I may bring truth. Where there is doubt, I may bring faith. Where there is despair, I may bring hope. Where there are shadows, I may bring light. Where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, Grant that I may seek rather to comfort rather to, than be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds, and it is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. That's good. That's a lot of awareness right there because a lot of people want things. And ultimately this prayer is saying, use me where it, I am needed, but ultimately where you are, you are what you need. Like some, it's like, I would love to be loved, but in order for you to be loved, it's saying you need to go in love Yeah, man. and understand what love is before you can receive yeah, it. I like that. One of the things that, you know, comes to mind for me is it's Sean. It's not about you. Right. It's not about you. You were a child and it was about you. 
And now you're a man. And Correct. it's not about you anymore. It's about you are a servant. You are a light. You are a leader of, and you lead by service and by giving and by charity and by gratitude and by building other people up. So thanks for sharing that, man. That inspired me to share that. No, thank you for sharing that. that. So let me, um, let me ask you, Jordan, and for everyone listening. Okay, if, if rites of passage is good, it's what we want to do. It's a healthy way of raising great kids. What would be the opposite of that? What Not doing anything. Antonym. Yeah. What oh, do, doing what that, that doctor said that you were just talking about or that author where it's like, we don't want pain, live pain free. It's like doing that. It's like, right. let's just sit on the couch and right. stay in the house. Well, I think we need to discuss this because I think there's a lot of parents that are really doing rites of passage well, but I think no one ever talks about this. I'm no, it's not. Right it's now. not big in our society. There's in a lot fact, of parents who are not doing it and are really doing a poor job of rites of passage. They're failing at yeah. rites of passage. No one ever talks about that. That's the first time I've ever said anything like that. We need to create a good American rites of passage. Ooh, what would <laughs> that be like? Up. I yeah, don't what know, do you, man. What do you mean? We, what do you mean? Well, like, I mean, yeah. we just get, like, we, what do we got? The sweet 16? What, like I said in the beginning, sweet what's 16. great is we have a blend of cultures, which makes up okay. America, so we can bring those cultures here, and we could do our own rites of passage. However, Ooh. wouldn't it be kind of nice if there was a rites of passage that you could choose that's American? That would so what, be. what is American? What does it mean to be an American? Well, well I, I'm like an Irish American or Swedish right. American. I don't have you could, one. I, you don't so, have one. So what would so, I, yeah. So let's, let's go to the constitution. My thought is like, what is it to me to be an American? It's, well, let's yeah. read the constitution. And I'm like, yeah. it probably has to do with the second amendment, right to bear freaking arms. Maybe we need to do something with, okay. with okay. artillery. <laughs> the hunter, guns. The hunter, the hunter coming, out. coming out. The hunter. And it's like, okay. listen, now you can shoot a bazooka. Once you get bazooka. that handle. <laughs> what was that, we 1985 bazooka? Oh, I know, I'm cheesy. No, but no, I'm like, right. what is American? Like you could think the American West, cowboy riding. Maybe we have mm -hmm. to ride a bull. That sounds really dangerous. There but maybe it's like yeah. learning to shoot. Like that's a right you have as an American, which mm -hmm. I think is pretty cool that a lot of people don't take advantage of. Maybe that's yeah. a rite of passage. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the answer is, but I, I think we either. need to come up with one that's pretty cool. I think you're onto something here. And I would like to believe that somebody is going to come up with something like that. That's like more Americanized, right? Yeah. The first thing that comes to me, mine for me is not a bazooka, which would be <laughs> some type of charity, like getting a young person involved in some type of charity or giving. This is why like, you know, what is really cool rites of passage is the Eagle Scouts. They have to do a service project, a legit service project. That's why, I mean, if you meet someone as an Eagle Scout or advanced Boy Scout, you're probably meeting a great young man or young young person, right? Sean, that is passage. that's that is really boring. Let's get some tannerite and blow some stuff up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, let's go on the opposite. Let's go a little darker for a second. Okay. Okay. If you if a parent struggles in rites of passage, what is the opposite of that? I get a term. Um, you might have heard of this term before. It's been around for a while. It's called extended adolescence. So Jordan, Ooh! Now there's a lot Adults. of controversy. Controversy. There's a lot of stuff around this. When you hear that term, what comes up for you? Extended adolescence. Our society right now. I mean, you got 20, 30, and 40 year olds living with their parents still. And we talk about that. I mean, how can you be an adult if you can't take care of yourself? Yep. Right? Yep. And you have to rely on others. That's one of the things yep. that this these cultures are saying. You are now yep. an adult. You are taking steps to take care of you and your family. Yeah, not uh, allowing your family to continue to take care of you. Yeah. And that's why that age is very interesting that 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, or maybe yeah. even older. I mean, it depends. But if you have an extended adolescence, mm -hmm. you're still a child at 28, yeah. 29, 30 years old. So sociologists have discovered that we've had here in America, we've had extended adolescence for several decades now. One of the ways of describing it is that we're letting children we're letting children be children for longer. Right. You're not demanding or asking young people to become adults. One of the great manifestations of that is this thing called college, where some people, they get to go off to college for a period of time, drink, do drugs, uh, just party, 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 maybe take a few classes, and they don't really have to become adults. Right. Very long, and then maybe they're take prolonging a gap year. the adulthood. Yeah, they take a yep. gap year. They maybe they gap come year. home. Maybe mm -hmm. they live under their parents' roof. Now Don't compare get a job this yet. Right. to some of these stories we just read of people wearing ant gloves and hump 
jumping over cows naked right, right. and going out in the woods by themselves or giving a big speech in front of a big class. Like this is so opposite. I had a client um, tell me just recently, this is, I'm not shaming this client at all. This is very common. The client has a serious problem on their hands because their, ch- their young adult is screen addicted. And so they're talking about doing an extended screen fast. How old? And just give us an age range just so we can get an idea. 16. Okay, thank you. All right. And I have a, a book. I have an ebook called <laughs> Parents Guide to Breaking Screen Addiction. It gives lots of tools and ideas. And one of the tools in there is how to do a screen fast properly. And just like any loving mom, I've heard this many, many times, the mother is really afraid that if you do a screen fast, it's going to make things worse. And also, well, where is my son going to talk to their friends? Because all their oh friends are Oh, my gosh. Online. But if what? you think about... Think about that. Now, just compare that fear of this young person taking some time away from video games to some of these other stories we've talked about. It's like this is yeah. where extended adolescence comes in. It, it's really one of the ways it happens is because us parents, we are afraid. We are afraid of ushering our kids into adulthood, into that tension, into the fear. Why are we afraid them- and our parents weren't afraid? Why, why yeah. is that? My wife's Gosh. dad made her go door to door at age five to find friends. Go knock That's on the door. Such a great. Story. Go find a friend. That's such yeah, a great story. It's and like it we don't. Her best, what is one of our best it, friends? Yes. Why? Why do we not do that? Why are we? we what are we scared of? We have a whole episode on that. I think didn't we make a whole episode about uh like are we pampering our kids? Yeah. We made yeah. I'm just things. I'm just throwing that question out to anybody listening. What What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? What are we afraid of? Yeah. Sit on that, everybody. Sit on that. What fears are holding you back from being like, literally it makes me want to want to turn off internet and not like for a month, say disconnection. You know what I mean? Yeah, no electricity for a week, just something to like no electricity. You just went, you went yeah. stream right there. Well, Dude, on. I'm going Amish on you. Okay. You yeah. don't even realize. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying big, you need to make big moves. You need to, I mean, you're not, we Do can't not baby be these afraid. Yeah. kids for, forever. I think it's so much. I, I I've been, you know, I have a lot to say on that topic. Here's what I've heard from a lot of parents, and I've read this in research too. And I don't want to spend much too much time on it, but um, here's two things I heard to answer your question. There's a culture now of parents, especially moms, who they they want their kids to be kids. They enjoy like waking their 16 year up for for school. They enjoy pampering them. They enjoy giving them a stress-free childhood or being a lawnmower parent. And they, they feel like, you know what, my kid is going to have a lot of years of adulthood and I just enjoy this and I want them to be babies and to just be kids forever. And it's so fun. it's selfishness on the parents potentially. Is that, that's what I didn't, I guess you could look at it that way. I guess I'm looking at there. it that way yeah. because they're being selfish to not allow them to, to, to push their kids mm-hmm. because they want to potentially still parent their yeah. kids for longer. Yeah, I think for some second point, I think for some um, there's trauma involved in that the parent. But there's is, been trauma it, forever. Yeah, you know, like Either we can't use has, that. I know they have as an it's excuse. Popular. It's a big the T word. The trauma word is a big. Either the parent was traumatized, and they're kind of still living and parenting in their trauma, or the child has been through trauma, and they're like, you know, my child's been through trauma, and I just want them everyone's to be happy been through now. trauma. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's very complicated. I know, I know. But let's talk really briefly about this. What would happen? If you do rites of passage very well, think about that for a second. What would happen to your child? You'd have amazing you and young your adults. Community thrive in rites of passage. Now answer this question. Let's sit on this for about two or three minutes because I don't want to make a whole episode out of this. It's kind of dark and depressing. What would happen if you, the parent, do rites of passage horribly? Poorly. What if you fail to usher your child into proper adulthood at age 12. At age a lot 15. of us are yelling right now. Be like, well, just look at America. Look where we are as a world. Okay. Let's, let's, let's focus okay. it down a little more. Cause you could yell that so answer. Focus I, it uh, as in your family. Like, let's all think if I were to fail, how would my family be? Mm-hmm. And let's think the next couple of years, what that would look yeah. like. It's depressing. I, I did a lot of research preparing for this episode and I found a lot of articles about extended adolescence. And here is something interesting. Here's an opinion article from a website called lifeway.com where this author is writing about six downsides to really struggling at rites of passage. And I'm just going to share some of the bullet points. You ready? Yep. Okay. The first one is 
he writes is compromised maturity is that you've got young adults in adult bodies, but they just are acting like children. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. Okay. Number two. Yeah. No, I'm just, yeah, I was just, I I agree. I've seen that. Fathers who are only friends, mothers who are only friends. Oh, with the child. We've talked about that a lot. It's like their efforts in parenting are like their efforts in high school. They, the yeah. parents just want to be liked. They want to be liked. They want to be accepted. And they'd rather just be liked and accepted rather than influence and guide. Yeah. And that's probably more likely, I mean, not necessarily more likely, but common in divorce families too. Because you want to be the parent that is liked more than the other parent potentially because mm-hmm. you're hurt by the other parent. So you're like, well, if my kid likes me more, that's better. So I'm just going to give them everything they want. Mm-hmm. The author Even writes number three point subsided, subsided pictorial of manhood or proper, you know, womanhood is what I'll add. What does that mean? Subsized I don't really know pictorial what it means. of the manhood. The author writes like when a younger male sees a man living like this. Okay. So let's say that you have a younger sibling okay, or you have a nephew or you have a neighbor and you see okay. like a, a man child who's 21, right? Or 23. Yeah. Well, then it becomes normal for them. Like, why would I need to grow up? Look at, our, right. look at my next door neighbor. What about my older right. brother? He's not growing okay. up. It just creates a cultural norm. And that's what we have going on. It becomes more normal to not grow up right. and to not make mature choices or think. Now, I really, really like the next point. This is actually the only reason why I chose to talk about this Lifeway article is for this next point. You ready for this? The author writes, unmarried women. Let me explain. As the pool of men is already quite slim for women. Okay. Let me rephrase that. As the pool of mature quality young oh, okay. men yeah. <laughs> is sense. already, already slim, slim for yeah. women, yep. it will get even more challenging as they are faced with men who are unfit for marriage. So I'm trying yeah. to think about my daughters. Okay. Let's say that they want to marry young in their early 20s or in their mid 20s. Right. Which is not young. Right. And let's go back 20 years. How many men were ready to be married, married. at age 25? Right. A lot now, more then. Yeah. Than well, now, now you've got these social media, you've got dating apps. You just swipe left or right, up and down, wherever the heck you swipe, just to get another woman in bed. And it's not allowing for companionship, it's not allowing for relationships. Yep. That's hard for these young women to be yeah. in. So, yeah. How do we as parents, oh gosh, it almost goes back to like arranged marriages makes more (laughs) more sense than because, (laughs) because it's like, at least you can see how they're, you know, oh, this one looks a little bit more mature. You should go after this one. (laughs) This one's going to piss you off and make you amped up. I'm ready for this. Unhirable uh, young adults. Oh, there's a ton of those out there. So (laughs) you, so if you do not, if you struggle with rites of passage, it means that by the, There's a chance that between the ages of 18 and 25, your child is going to struggle in getting hiring or even let's go 16 through 25. They're not going to be good at getting a job and keeping a job. And I know many of you have scrolled through social media recently, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, but the trend right now that I'm seeing are all these, whatever age group we're in, I'm a millennial, whatever you were in now are going out of college, they're getting jobs and they're realizing what it's like to be in the real world. And they're talking to their quote unquote friends or their followers crying on the screen saying, this is so hard. I worked eight hours and there's taxes taken out, blah, 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 because their parents failed to properly train them for what the world is really like. And that's what's happening. Yeah. And they're in shock now. They're in shock. They're in shock. They're like, Like, this is what it's like. So hard for me. Why? Right. It's not, it's been like this forever. It it says more about the parenting. Now, number six is really interesting. Again, remember everybody, this is just an opinion piece and I'm just paraphrasing from an opinion piece. (laughs) Number six, life lived in fantasy. Ooh, the Oculus digital world. This, this might be the most, the most frightening of all. Yeah, Men definitely. in extended childhood treat their lives like one big fantasy world. They engage others through artificial means like yep. pornography, social media, mm-hmm. and video games mm-hmm. instead of real life. What's that movie? Um, wow. Wow. 
what is that? Ready Player One, right? Oh, a lot of people. It's a great it's a movie. movie. Yeah, that's a good but movie. his best friends in the digital realm he didn't even know what they looked like yeah he met them in the real world and he's like oh this is you're 11 you know like it's what it's like living in that that's social realm you don't know what people man. like look that's like pretty common and yeah you'd have to ask 10 different people even 10 specialists is that healthy for our kids to have virtual friends or to have you know like online friends versus in-person friends but i i think in my experience, I would say it's not unhealthy to have virtual online friends. I've I've seen a lot of healthy teenagers um, have them. I just there needs to be balance. Like you need to have in person friends. It's just a, a no brainer. I don't need mm -hmm. to tell you the research on that. So, Jordan, there's lots of benefits to thriving rites of passage. Right. And there's some really negative dark stuff that can happen if the parents struggle in rites of passage. But we're here because we want to help people thrive with Correct. rites of passage. So as we get to the Ask the Family Coach section, a lot of us are thinking, okay, we get it. We need to do something. But the more important thing is how do we wisely use these rites of passage with our young adults? And I know you've got some tools for us, but I guess as some of us are listening to this, we, we have kids, maybe teenagers or younger, we need to start thinking about what, what we want to do and what's important to us, I'm assuming, right? I got three tips for you, and I'm really okay. excited to share this with you, okay? The first tip is very, they're all very simple, is just plan ahead. Plan ahead. I was planning for mine 13 years before it even happened. So think, right. what do you want to do? Jordan and I, we gave you a ton of creative ideas today. Do you want to, you want to put, you know, you want to put some gloves on your kids? Do you right. want to take them out for a camping trip? Do you want to yeah. do like a, a baptism, a confirmation, a bat mitzvah? Do you want to do a, a big party? Do you want to gather the people? Plan yeah. ahead and Plan make ahead. it big, make it dramatic and do it. Right. One of the big ones, guys, w w you know, when I was growing up, Sean Don was like, hey, guys, we're going to go cow tipping. So we grabbed the <laughs> van. We all piled in the van. We drove out to rural California and yeah, we tried we to tip. It didn't work out. Tell you it what, didn't right work now. out. I don't know the rancher was not, not happy. I don't know if it's <laughs> real. I don't know. I don't know. No, cows never, lay down. They don't they sleep do. standing. They do. They, they do. lay do. down. And they, don't, and they don't really. But it's even we've, I've done this. I've probably gone cow tipping probably 15 times. I've never once seen a cow sleeping, standing up. Yeah. And right. I've walked upon many cows, and you were there. And first of all, they're scary. Like, if, unless you're like a rancher. They're walking huge. A cow, they're huge. No, they will like, trample you. You, you can't push their old, them over. No. Yes. And, and, then was, and even if they sleep, like, if you walk up to a cow, they can – they don't – do they even sleep? Like, they'll wake up if you walk up. Oh, yeah, right? like, during the day, they're like animals. They'll go under a tree in the shade, and they'll lay down. And, yeah, they, they, they can snooze. But it's not like they're sleeping at night. I mean, they have to stay aware. Right. They have to watch out for coyotes. They got to watch out for, you know, right. things yeah. that can yeah, bother them. Yeah, <laughs> it's such a false cow tipping. It's a folklore. So plan ahead. Like, hey, um, do you, you don't need to say – you don't need to answer this question. Just kind of putting you on the spot because this is public, and there's a chance your kids would listen to this. Zero chance, I'd say. But do uh, you think you you and your wife, Danny, would do anything special for the the twins at a certain age? You got any things that – I mean, we've like, never thought about it, really. Yeah. And, I mean, they, we've just been trying to survive as parents. I'm not thinking that far <laughs> yeah. ahead. Okay, so, like, I just, like – but, I mean, we're almost – they're going to be 10. No, are yeah. they – yeah, they're going to be 10. That's a, a double digit's a big rite of passage. You hit double digits, is, you know. And then is, yeah. we'll probably do something at, you know, 12, 13. I, I don't know what that is yet, but – we always try to make them feel special. And I got to cool. now really think about what that rites of passage is going to be. Well, hopefully we'll still be doing this podcast when they turn 12 or 13. And you can tell us and we can go back in time and we can yeah. bring it like we'll bring clips in from this into that. Here's point. Here's tip number two. Um, use your words to build identity and expectation. Here's what That's I mean. That's good. That's good. It means if you're doing a rites of passage, it's very important that you look at them and you say, look, Starting today, you know, you are a young adult. That's how I view you. That's how I'm going to treat you. Starting today, this is what, how I'm going to look at you differently. And I'm going to expect you to do things differently. You want to build that identity into them. Think of it this way. Your child cannot start acting like a wise, caring, responsible, loving young adult until they believe that they are a loving, 
wise, responsible, caring young adult. You have to mm-hmm. believe what you, you have to believe who you are before you act out of your right. identity. So for example, if you believe that you're just a kid and you're 18, I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid, mom. Mom, you yeah. can't do this to me. I'm in high, right. I'm a senior. I'm a kid. Right. Then you will act like a kid. But if you believe, you know what? I am a senior. This is a, a year for me to really have a great time with my friends, to celebrate the last year of kind of like my high school life. But this is also a year for me to prepare for this next season of my life, to deepen my relationships with my friends, with my parents, to really live a life, a, a wise lifestyle when so many of my other peers are living very selfishly and carelessly. If you really believe that, then you'll live it out. So Mm -hmm. how our kids feel about their identity, you know, really matters. And because a parent's words are so powerful, tip number two is use your words wisely to build identity and expectation in your kids. That's beautiful. That's good. And we got to be wise about what we say. I don't know what I'm going to say yet. Maybe write it down like Sean did. I think that's great because sometimes in the moment you kind of don't get your words together, right? And so it's like this yeah. plan ahead, step one, two, actually writing it down prior to having this meeting or this chat is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Now, point, tip number three, I think is probably maybe the hardest thing for us parents. And it's what I see many parents struggle with. Are you ready for this? Parents, tip number three on how to thrive with rites of passage is that after that rites of passage event takes place, you have got to change your parenting. Let me explain. Treating them. So it's a mindset shift, not just for the kids, but for you too right. as an adult. As exactly. Because if you're still treating, you know, if you're still treating your like freshman in high school, like a child, like well, why, well, what's going on with you? Why even have rites of passage in the first place? If you're still treating them poorly, treating them, like you did when they were, you know, nine years old. And what's the point of a rites of passage? The purpose of a, all these beautiful rites of passage is for the whole community to change, not just the child. It's like, you've got to think about how are you going to do things differently? How are you going to raise the bar? How are you going to trust them more? How are you going to give them more responsibility? How are you going to talk to them differently? How are you going to engage with them differently? All that mm-hmm. stuff makes sense, mm-hmm. doesn't it? It does. We got to do it. We got to step up. We got to, that's, was it hard? I mean, you're the only one here who's gone through a rites of passage. Was it hard for you to switch that parenting mindset? Uh, I don't think for me, just because, I mean, I don't know much about much, but this is like what I do. Mm -hmm. I think that like a big hack that I start doing around age 12 or 13 is I start calling my kids young adults. And I do that for them so they can really see that's how I view them. So they can embrace that identity. But to be honest, I think it's good for me too. Yeah. Like that I'm not like, this is a young, you know, young adult I'm dealing with here. Right. Like, I don't, who, I'm not entitled to anything with them. They don't have to right. like me. They don't have to be close with me. They don't have to respect me. Right. Like, they don't have to genuinely care about me. Like I've got to earn this and show up and how I treat this young adult really matters. That's good. I like that. Thank you. Cause we could use that. That's a simple tactic. Just change the, the verbiage. Boom. Verbiage. That's the next, that's Boom. next step. Verbiage. It's important. Yeah, man. All right. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, a lot of us are reflecting now and I'm <laughs> definitely going to be thinking about what I'm going to do for my kids. Skydiving, bungee jumping <laughs> like the kids in Vanuatu. Yeah, dude. Shout out to the Ethiopian folks who don't cow tip. <laughs> they cow jump naked oh over the cows. Uh-huh. <laughs> so whatever we decide, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe people listening have an idea. If you don't mind commenting, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Be Love cool. to hear your thoughts. Use our, uh, listen to this podcast, go and leave some comments on my social media videos. You'll see it's me with my, you know, 12 year old daughter at the time. So it's two or three years ago that we took it and leave some comments about what this episode, uh, meant to you or yeah. what rites of passage you're doing or share your ideas so other parents can read it and see, Hey, I want to learn from that. And that's, yeah. my, that'll be my rites of passage. If you're I mean, offended, if you're offended on, on the gun talk and, and you don't want to do the guns, that's fine. But if you want to go skeet shoot, let me know how you did. I think that'd be awesome. There you go. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's good. Yep. That's a powerful I, – I like that you said that because that's a just like a driver's license or the rites of passage, you get access to this powerful thing. You know, um, access to powerful things is very important. So my attitude of gratitude is this. You know what I'm thinking about right now? 
I'm thinking about some of the people in my life who really, uh, they were adults. And when I was ages 12 through 16, 17, 18, they loved me and they helped me make that jump into adulthood. I'm thinking about some of my old mentors, Rich and Miles. I'm thinking about my, my buddy's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Bush, Mr. and Mrs. Hunter. I'm even, um, I'm even thinking about your mom because she really had a big role in my life in my early 20s, just loving me and believing in me and supporting me. I really just thank you for Velvet for uh, just all your support in my life as a, as a young man. How about you? What's your attitude? of That's gratitude? beautiful. My attitude of gratitude is being thankful um, for this country and the fact that we have a blend of all these cultures. And I think yes. it's really cool that we have these different things that we can do to help us, you know, come of age basically. And I think, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't really think it was cool. I was like, oh, you're doing a bar mitzvah. Oh, you're doing the years, you know, mm -hmm. not sweet 16, but I guess, yeah, sweet 16. You're, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you know, you're doing your quinceanera. Why are you guys doing that? Cause I didn't, I, I didn't understand that it was kind of this. I didn't. And I think it would be very cool if we can make it cool again, if we can make it mm -hmm. big and a big deal. And yeah, so buddy. I'm thankful that we have options and I'm thankful to be here. And I'm thankful for this podcast. Cause I think it's going to open a lot of our minds. Thank you so much for joining us today. You are a good parent. Oh my gosh, family life and parenting is so hard. I hope today gave you some tools and some inspiration. And if you're joining this podcast, then please do me a favor. Leave us a positive review on your podcast provider. And if you're hearing this and you're struggling as a parent, your family is struggling, or you need parenting tools for that one challenging, struggling kid, well, I will see you in a live Zoom call inside my VIP membership, and I will give you the specific tools you need to solve every problem you have and to stay strong, be close, and teach wisdom.